Now I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I've rewatched the movies and I've reread the books countless times and I've always found the Wizarding World to be a safe and magical place. As much love as there is for this world, there have been a few things that have pissed people off. But for this video, I'd like to talk about how the Harry Potter films ruined Ron Weasley. And I'll break this down into three main points. Ron being the oafish comedy relief and his value being downplayed, Ron's relationship with Hermione and Ron's relationship with Harry. For most people, Hermione is the favorite. But mine was always Ron Weasley. Now I'd like to point out that I actually really like Rupert Grint in the role and for the most part he managed to showcase Ron's tender and light-hearted nature. What I do have a problem with was the writing and characterization of Ron through the films. See, for those who've only watched the films, Ron's an okay character. He's mostly always there when his friends need him. He's sometimes smart. He's kind of courageous. He's likable. But for those who've read the books, Ron is so much more. He's witty and smart in his own way. He's loyal as hell. And he's the character that the books use a lot to bring in exposition of the wizarding world because that's all he knows. He grew up in it. In the films, he's barely known as the heart of the series and he's basically there for comedic relief. This is best described in the Devil's Snare scene from the Philosopher's Stone. Now in the actual chapter of the books, there are a bunch of tasks that Harry and the rest have to get through and Harry, Ron and Hermione get to showcase their skill and value to the group. Hermione shines in the potions task, which is cut from the film. So it made sense for her to get her due in the Devil's Snare scene. But a major departure from the scene in the books is that all three of them contribute to getting through that task. Basically, Hermione forgets to use magic in a stressful situation, which is very in character for her, at least earlier on in the series. But in the films, it plays out a little differently, which is fine. But this did not need to happen. Luckily we didn't panic. Lucky Hermione pays attention in herbology. I know it's just a random funny line from the first film, but it sets up what becomes Ron's basic character trait throughout the films. Being offish, incompetent, and kind of just there. And that is most definitely not Ron Weasley from the books. Look at this scene from the Chamber of Secrets. Ron gets up to defend Hermione's honor after she's called a mudblood by Malfoy. In the chapter right after this, Ron explains what a mudblood is to Harry and Hermione. He points out it's a racial slur, but also points out that a lot of pure-blood wizards are kind of bad at magic, and Hermione shouldn't feel bad about it. But in the scene in the films, Hermione gets to give the explanation, and Ron's just vomiting up slugs. Hermione gets his line. Another example of this is where Ron stands up to Sirius with a broken leg to protect Harry. But in the films, the line was given to Hermione. Throughout the films, Ron's lines are given to other characters to prop them up. And with that, let's move on to Ron's relationship with Hermione. Now, Ron's value being downplayed is mostly the fault of the screenwriters. In fact, Stephen Cloves, who was the screenwriter for seven out of the eight Harry Potter films, has gotten a lot of flack for bias. Steve, Hermione is a character who you've said in the past is one of your favorites. Does that make her easier to write. Yeah, I mean, I like writing all three, but I, I, I've always loved writing Hermione. And it shines through in the films. Before the films came out, Ron was apparently more popular than Hermione. Now, obviously, while adapting page to screen, you're gonna change a few things, and that's fine. But just because you change things doesn't mean you destroy the characterization that people have come to love all these years. Just look at Game of Thrones season eight. In the books, he's super loyal and super lovable, but that just doesn't come across in the films. Ron always loved Hermione, but he also cared for her deeply and respected her. He always had her back and he always saw value in her even when she didn't and that comes across very strongly in the books. But in the films, he seems mostly hostile towards her, kind of arrogant and half the time I don't even feel like he likes her. Take this infamous chapter from the books. And here's the exact same scene from the films. That is the second time you've spoken out of turn, Miss Granger. Are you incapable of restraining yourself, or do you take pride in being an insufferable know-it-all? He's got a point, you know. It's a stark difference of characterization from book Ron and film Ron. In this duel scene, you'll clearly see how Ron's characterization is misunderstood in the films. Here, Hermione beats him, he feels emasculated, and then kind of writes it off when he's talking to his male cohorts. In the book, he's really proud to be able to disarm her once or twice because he knows how talented and how powerful she actually is. See, the book showcase how Ron and Hermione understand each other's flaws, grow up with each other, they learn from each other, and are accepting of things that they can't change. But the films focus more on a tragic and flawless Hermione who's just trying to fix Ron. And that's just not how their friendship or their romance was. A lot of things Ron does or says is to prop Hermione up. It's to make her seem like the second protagonist. Speaking of propping one character up at the expense 
of another. Let's talk about Ron's relationship with Harry. I think the friendship between Harry and Ron is severely downplayed in the films. Through the film's gaze, it seems that Harry gets closer to Hermione as the series goes on. Now, usually I would blame the screenplay, but where the films suffer the most is the loss of a very vital element, the insight of Harry's thoughts and feelings. Hermione was the least liked of the three, and sure, Harry grows to love and respect her in his own way, and they form their own bond. But for the most part in the books, Harry found her kind of awkward and didn't really warm up to her till much later in the series. He was always closer to Ron. It was on purpose that Ron was the one Harry had to save in the second task of Goblet of Fire. It's because their friendship was really important and extremely vital to both of their journeys. Speaking of the importance of Harry and Ron's friendship, let's talk about the worst thing the film series has ever done to Ron Weasley. <sighs> I hate this scene so much. Right after Ron gets splinched in the Deathly Hallows, we see him hurt, hungry, getting tired, getting more and more moody. But the real gravity of the situation is kind of missing in the films. In the books, it's very explicitly said that the injury was really dire. And the healing herb Dittany that was used in the books and the films doesn't exactly heal you, it just accelerates the healing. So the wound is just a few days older. So in the books, he's in a lot of pain with no proper nutrition and it's not healing too well. And in the films, he's fairly well healed and he's in a sling. And I think that takes away from the mindset of the character when he finally leaves in this scene. What's wrong? Now let's play back the scene before Ron leaves and point out the differences. I thought I did too. Well, uh, I'm sorry. Harry gets a sorry in there. That's not in the books. What part of this isn't living up to your expectations? Did, did you think we were going to be staying in a five-star hotel, finding a horcrux every other day? You thought you'd be back with your mum by Christmas? There's a downplay of the insult mummy to mum. I thought you knew what you were doing. I thought Dumbledore would have told you something worthwhile. Ron's line, we thought you knew what you were doing, changes to I thought you knew. Yeah. To make sure I don't hear Ginny's name. Or Fred. Or George. Or Mark. What, you think I'm not listening to? You think I don't know how this feels? Oh, you don't know how it feels! Your parents are dead! You have no family! So Ron never mocks Harry for losing his parents. He instead tries to get him to understand the fear and the dread that he's feeling. And the fact that Ron says Harry doesn't have any family is complete bull****. Throughout both the films and the books, it's very clearly stated on multiple occasions that Ron considers Harry family. Not once is this belief shaken. What's more, all the cutaways of scenes of Ron watching Harry and Hermione seem to imply some kind of romantic jealousy, which it definitely was not. Ron is fiercely protective of the people he loves, so he was scared that his family, Harry, and most importantly Hermione, were being put in harm's way. The film series just didn't seem to understand Ron's journey and it feels like he was just there because he was a main character in the books. The films morphed the three main characters from being smart in different ways people to two protagonists and one guy who's just along for the ride. And I don't know, I just feel like Ron deserved way better.